Hi everyone, this is Subeda from Zephyr Lake Carmelite Mission. Today is probably one of the most significant holy days of my life as a Carmelite and as a person of Indian origin. Uh, because early this morning, Pope Francis canonized 10 saints from around the world, particularly from France and also from India and from the Netherlands. And um, first of all, because I'm a lay Carmelite, I'm so glad that uh, blessed Titus Bransma is now Saint Titus Bransma. And we've been praying for his canonization for many years. And secondly, blessed Devasagayam Pillai is now Saint Devasagayam Pillai. And he is a saint from the southern part of India from where I come and particularly from my mother's diocese, that is Kotar Diocese in Kanyakumari district. In fact, my grandfather used to play the bell organ in the Kotar Cathedral for many years. And uh, Saint Devasagayam Pillai was born as, uh, as a Hindu and he became a convert to the Catholic faith. And he was a man for peace and for nonviolence and he opposed discrimination of people of the lower caste. But particularly for his faith and for his convictions, he was tortured, he was captured and then he was tortured for several days uh, in an attempt to make him give up his faith. Finally, he was shot dead. There are many miracles that were attributed to his intercession, including that at the point of his death, the gun of the executioner would not fire until the blessed raised his hands and made the sign of the cross. Only then the executioner's gun worked. Um, in fact, I myself have experienced a personal miracle um, when I visited Aral Vai Muli, which is uh, in Kurusadi Church of Our Lady of Sorrows. It was, I believe, in 2013 when I visited there, I experienced a miracle myself. That day, my parents, my siblings, my children, uh, we were all uh, traveling to many churches where my parents and my relatives had received their sacraments, um, including you know, baptism and first communion, confirmation, marriage, and so on and so forth. And each time that we would enter a church, I would kneel down to pray. Similarly, when I entered the church of our uh, in Kurusadi in Aralwai Muni, uh, I knelt to pray, and it was at the foothills of the place where Saint Devasagayam Pillai was martyred. And when I knelt, it felt like I was not kneeling on the smooth surface of the church floor, but I was. It was like I was kneeling on a rocky, rough surface. And I was startled, so I opened my eyes and I looked down and I saw the smooth floors of the church and I continued to close my eyes and I prayed, but I could the whole time feel like I was kneeling on a rocky surface. Later, we went to the actual site where the blessed was martyred and it was on a very rocky surface where he was shot and he was martyred. My reason for sharing this is so you too will be inspired to live a heroic life like Saint Devasagayam Pillai, to, to be fervent in your faith and to not give up your faith when faced with persecution. And then blessed Titus Bransma, who is now Saint Titus Bransma. He was a, a Dutch Carmelite friar of the ancient observance, so it is especially a great honor and a great joy for me today. Um, he was a prolific writer and a, he, was, he was a beautiful, he even wrote beautiful poetry. Uh, he visited Niagara Falls as well. I've been to uh, the house where he uh, stayed when he visited uh, upstate New York and particularly was in Niagara Falls. And he also was a journalist and he was at the time of his, uh, capture by the Nazis. He was the ecclesiastical advisor to the um, Union of Dutch Catholic Journalists. 
So that was kind of what got him in trouble <clears throat> because at the time he was arrested, he was arrested for instructing the Catholic publishers in Netherlands to not publish the Nazi propaganda. And because he did that, they asked him to stop and he wouldn't because his conscience and his faith would not permit him to stop uh, advising, giving the right advice. So he continued and he did this on behalf of his bishop. And after his arrest, you know, he was sent to the Dachau uh, concentration camp where he exhibited Christian hope under this very extreme, dangerous, um, terrible conditions. He served his fellow, pris fellow prisoners heroically. Even on his deathbed, he continued to give witness to Christ by handing his rosary to the nurse who was administering the lethal injection to put him to death. That was how he died. And the nurse who, uh, who, ha who was a fallen away Catholic, after looking at the face of Titus Brandsman, having this experience, she was totally converted by this. I wish to share this one particular uh, scene in the movie on St. Titus Brandsma, uh, where we see that, uh, you know, there is, they're in the concentration camp and all the prisoners are in starvation and a piece of bread falls to the ground and all the people are fighting over that little piece of bread on the floor like animals. But we see Blessed Titus Brandsma, he is giving away even the little bread that he has to those who are weaker than him. And we see that in the face of difficulty, even good respectable people in a situation so dire end up behaving you know, worse than like animals. But when we have God, like St. Titus Brandsma has, he was able to remain with interior peace and keep his moral behavior in alignment with the teachings of Christ. So I'd like us to also reflect, how do we react? How do we act when faced with genuine needs and the reality of evil? When we are faced with the reality of evil, do we look at the crucified Lord and see how he treated his persecutors and do we follow his example? Because that is the only right way to react and act when we are faced with evil and persecution. It is a perfect answer. We are able to be selfless in giving only when we unite ourselves with the crucified Lord and imitate his example on the cross, not just with those who are our friends, but also to our persecutors. And how I wish that I was able to go to Rome today for the canonization, but it was not so, and it was not to be that way, and I'm fine with it, because I was able to watch everything from home uh, with my family, um, I was watching on TV. And I pray that each of us will be counted among the saints and martyrs of the modern times, because martyrdom is not something that happened in those days. Martyrdom is actually increasing, and there are many numerous hidden martyrs who are not canonized in this modern time, happening every day around the world in the most unexpected places where we may not even imagine hidden martyrdom goes on in silence. In, you know, it, not only in the hostile territory, but even in seemingly safe areas of the world, we have numerous hidden martyrs. Dear friends, I know we prayed yesterday, especially we prayed for peace and unity for Ukraine and Russia, but today I invite you to please pray for the conversion of hearts of all people, regardless of faith, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, race, social strata, or what organization they belong to. Let us pray for the conversion of all people who persecute others, who are different from them, or who have some reason to hate, the, 
hate their neighbor. Let us pray for the conversion of all of our hearts that we not persecute, not discriminate, and that we will be counted among the martyrs, not among the people who are the persecutors, the ones who dislike others. But let us pray that we are not persecutors, but uh, who are prejudiced in our approach with others, but that we count, that we be counted among the saved, those who love God in heaven and love God in their neighbor. So with that, I would like to also say a special prayer today for all my Hindu friends who are, um, um, you know, there are, um, I have many Hindu friends and I went to a Catholic school, I went to a Catholic college and I had many Hindus who studied with me, who are still friends with me and there is most of the Christians, Catholics and Hindus are friends, you know, we get along well, so like family. There is a very minority people in any culture, in any religion, in any um, ethnicity, there is always a minority that persecutes those who are different from them. But the majority are good people. So I want to also pray for unity between Hindus and Christians around the world and let uh, Deva Sagayam Pillai, Saint Deva Sagayam Pillai, be a unifier of all people. And let, let blessed Titus Bransma, who's now Saint Titus Bransma, inspire us to be tolerant and put away prejudices against people who are different from us. So with that, I'd like to uh, end my video for today and let us ask for the intercession of those, these two great saints. Saint Titus Bransma, pray for us. Saint Deva Sakayam Pillai, pray for us. And all the other saints who were canonized this morning, including uh, Cesar de Bas, Luigi Maria Palazzolo, Guistino Maria Rusolillo, Charles de Pocault, Maria Riviere, Maria Francesca of Jesus Rubato, Maria of Jesus, Santa Canale, Maria Dominica, Mantovani, pray for us.